Welcome to the Summer Vibes series. These beginner videos are designed to help new users learn the basics of Marvelous Designer. In this tutorial, we will make an environment umbrella. Start by bringing in our avatar. You can download the file from Connect. See the video description box for the link. Go up to File, Import, and pick the umbrella asset. The custom avatar in the scene is saved as an OBJ file. This avatar is much taller than the default size, so we will adjust how we're working to accommodate that. The changes are working with a higher particle distance than normal and a different skin offset. We don't need the library window for now, so go ahead and close it. Looking at this umbrella avatar, there are six segments and they are triangular, so that makes it pretty easy to make these patterns. To start off with, create a triangle pattern shape using the polygon tool, located in the 2D toolbar. If you aren't familiar with this tool, you left click with your mouse to create segment points and segment lines. If you make mistakes, you can take steps back with the backspace key. Hold Control while you click to make curve points, and hold Shift to adhere your line to specific angles. When you want to finish creating your pattern, you close it by meeting the last point to the first. For my demonstration, I made a bunch of squiggles, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape to cancel the process. Next, go ahead and start creating your triangle. Once I've closed the polygon, I can see that I have my pattern. Mine is red in 3D because it's easier for us to see. To do this, go to the Fabric window, double-click on Fabric 1, and you can select your color in the Property Editor under Material. I chose red, you can choose whatever color you'd like. We are changing the color so it is easier for us to see the fabric in the 3D window because the avatar is white. This does change how our flip normals will appear though. The darker side is the flip normal, and the true color is the normal side. In the 3D window, we can rotate our patterns by left-clicking once, and then rotate using the gizmo tool. I'm going to use this to place the apex of the triangle in the center of the umbrella. With the gizmo tool, wherever you click on the pattern in the 3D space is where it's going to be the pivot point, so I can click near the top point and rotate it so it is centered. As I am adjusting the pattern in the 3D space, I'm trying to make this half the size of one of the gaps. We are not measuring or being exact here, so as long as it's close in size, it will work. I will close the Pattern Shape tools, then popping out the Edit Pattern tools, I'm going to use the Z hotkey, Edit Pattern tool, and grab the line segments and pull them down like so to begin changing their shape. This is half of a pattern. I can right-click a segment line that is the center of the space and unfold with symmetric editing. This gives us our full pattern and allows for symmetric changes. If anything is done to one side of the line, they're applied to the other. My triangle isn't quite right and doesn't fit the space yet, so I will modify the pattern to fit more accurately. Modify your pattern so that it fits in the space from the center of one pole to the center of the other pole. As you can see, mine's pretty close. I'm trying to keep it about the center of each pole. We can make changes later if we need to, though. I'm going to adjust this so it's a bit easier to see because we are going to be doing more in the 2D window. I've got one pattern piece done, and I know I need to make pockets that will go across two pattern pieces. Knowing that, I'm going to use the internal polygon line tool next and create an internal line to sew the future pocket to. Left click once to create an internal point and draw a line parallel to the edge of the pattern and double click to finish. By pockets, I mean we are going to be making pattern pieces that will hold the finished umbrella in place on the poles without any other methods. To make sure that the internal line is touching the edge of the pattern, right-click the outer segment point and choose Extend and Trim to Pattern Outline. We will also apply elastic value ahead of time to what will become the free edge of 100%. We don't want the umbrella center to sag too much when it stretches from end to end, so that elastic being at 100% will prevent the edges of the pattern from stretching too much. 
With all of these pieces adjusted, go ahead and make more pattern pieces using instanced clones. Right click with the Edit Pattern tool and you can choose Clone Pattern with Linked Editing, Instance Pattern. You could also choose Clone as Instance or just Copy Paste. This allows me to make edits to all of my patterns at once if I need to, which is why we choose Instance Patterns. Here I want to make sure I get up to five new pieces, so I have a total of six pieces. They will all populate in a line in the 3D space and the 2D window when you do this. To make our work easier, we will place these so that the edges are next to each other in a hexagon shape. Using Ctrl A, right clicking and choosing Remove Linked Editing, these patterns are no longer linked to each other. We will relink these later. Now that they're unlinked, we can individually rotate them, which allows us to create that hexagon shape. To rotate them so that their edges are parallel to each other, right click a pattern and choose Rotate and then select Parallel to. I'm selecting the parent line first, I want this one to be the parallel line, and then I will select the child line on the original pattern. Again, right click, rotate parallel to, pick parent line and child line. Sometimes it flips fully around, fix that by selecting the pattern, holding shift and then rotating manually so it holds a 90 degree rotation and you can fix it easy. Go ahead and finish rotating your patterns with the rotate parallel to. We won't end up with a perfect hexagon shape, that's fine because they really shouldn't be touching anyway. One set of them we will line up so that we can make our pockets quickly and prevent any confusion as we work. So move one set of patterns so that their edges are touching. We will make the pocket with this as a reference. This is going to be that pocket pattern. Using the polygon tool or the H hotkey, we can draw right on top of our pattern pieces, tracing the internal lines and the edges of the pattern to create the shape. Move the pocket pattern out of the way. We will reapply Instance Pattern to the large patterns one more time, select them all, right click and choose Apply Linked Editing Instanced Patterns. To sew the pocket on more easily in a future step, we will need to edit the larger patterns one more time. Select the Edit Pattern tool to do this. Make sure to only select the point near the pattern outline. Right click and select Extend Trim and Add Point to Pattern Outline this time. Do this to both points on the one pattern piece. We extended and trimmed the internal lines to the pattern edge, but we didn't add points to the end of them. Because we relinked those patterns, this action applies to all of our pattern pieces. Go ahead and delete that center segment point as well. Select all of the large pattern pieces that we have been editing. Right click the selected patterns in the 3D space and select Reset 2D Arrangement Selected. This is why we arranged them in the 2D window first. The 2D window is also your UV layout and also it makes your life easier if you have to reset pattern placement. Now that they're all selected, rotate your patterns in 3D so that the triangles are all lined up with the spaces that you want them to correspond to. In the 3D window, we have the tack tools. Use the tack tools from the 3D window and tack one of the center points to the avatar center. Using tack again, do the same to all of the other points on the outer edge, tacking one side to one of these edges. This will help us with our 3D placement when we simulate later. For now, we don't need the pocket pattern to simulate, so right click it and choose Deactivate Pattern Only. This keeps it in the same location in space and removes all collision to make our work easier. So I said earlier that we're going to be working a little differently than we would on a person. This is a much larger amount of fabric, so it makes it easier to simulate and work quickly if we change some properties. First, make the pattern's particle distance 30 from 20. Do this to all of your selected patterns in the Property Editor and Particle Distance. Then we're going to increase the skin offset for the avatar. Select the avatar and go to the Property Editor again. Under Surface at the top, we have the skin offset. Normally, it's at a 3, but we're going to make it at a 6 for now. We are also going to change the friction and kinetic friction to 0 on this avatar. This will make it easier to adjust the pattern pieces on the avatar itself. Select all patterns with Control A and strengthen them, turning them orange in the view. Last but not least, before we simulate, we need to sew all of these together. So using the Edit Sewing Tools in the 2D toolbar, choose the Segment Sewing Tool. In the 2D window, click once to create the first part of the sewing relationship, then again in the same spot on the pattern you will sew it to. This is why we set up our patterns like this. They are the same in the 2D window as they are in the 3D window, and we don't need to worry about what's going to sew to what. 
We also don't have to worry too much about placement in the 3D space because we already use the tack tool to help us set them in place. Once that's done, go ahead and simulate. It should look similar to mine. We're pretty much done now with our base asset. Now for some cleanup work. Using the Edit Tack tool, go ahead and click that center tack that we made earlier and use Delete to delete it. Select all of your patterns again and use the hotkey Control H to turn off strengthening and see how your patterns look. Simulate again afterwards. If you also have it sagging in the middle like I do, all of your items are still linked together so you can make adjustments to the patterns to make them smaller. Moving the pocket pattern out of our way, we can use the Transform Pattern tool to make these smaller. Select the patterns and use the marquee in the corner to make them smaller. Right click instead of release and we can input exact values. I will input 98% for both vertical and horizontal. This does affect how the pocket would fit, but don't worry about that. We will also adjust the pocket. Select the pocket pattern, corner drag, right click 98% and that should keep it about the same size. Next, we're gonna sew the pockets onto the larger pattern pieces using the segment sewing tool. Sew the first pocket into place, then instance pattern or copy paste, a total of six pieces. I like to place them in the same direction and near the other pieces that they will sew to. This is tedious, so I've sped it up. Once they're in place, remove the linked editing, and I recommend rotating them in place in the direction that you want to sew them to. Sew all of the pocket pieces to the internal and external lines using the segment sewing tool. This might take you some time. We will cut out here and come back since this is pretty repetitive. Once you've applied all of the sewing relationships, we will place them in 3D before we simulate. Using the Edit Pattern tool, select all of these pocket pieces and in the 3D window, right click one of them and choose Superimpose Over in the drop down menu. This places them over the line they sew onto in the 3D space. After they're placed and while they're still selected, drag them downward in the 3D window so that they are not colliding with anything. Reactivate them so that we can simulate using Control J while the patterns are selected or right click and select Activate on the drop down menu. The normals are going in the same direction as the main pattern. We need them to face the opposite or away from the avatar so the normals need to flip. In the 3D window, right click those patterns again and choose Flip Normal. Making sure these lower patterns are now facing the opposite direction. Once done, freeze the stable larger pattern pieces to make it easier to work. The pocket patterns are on the smaller side, so we need to change their particle distance from higher to lower. Going to the pockets property editor, Go ahead and change the particle distance down to 20, simulate and adjust them so that they are in place. If they're colliding with your avatar, pull them out while you're simulating. If 20 particle distance is still causing the avatar to intersect with the cloth, you can change it down to 15. The reason we're working at such a high value is so that we can simulate more quickly and work more quickly. Reactivate everything after bringing the particle distance for the pockets down to 20 or 15. Use Control J to toggle the activation status. After activating, if your items are colliding with the avatar again, continue to pull it out of the mesh as needed. You can reduce the particle distance for the larger patterns if you want, but I don't have to. Once everything is simulated into place, you can use Control H or Strengthen to help stabilize your cloth. Once it's stable, we are done with our basic umbrella asset. Next, we can make some hanging tabs for additional elements to the umbrella. Turn off simulation, and we will make the hanging tabs. Selecting the free edges line length with Shift to include the smaller segments we made. My number is 1740.8. Mine is the example. Make sure to use your own line measurement. Don't use mine. Using the rectangle polygon tool, right click and input the length. Then a width, I'm going to use 250 millimeters and we're gonna do one more thing. You can leave it square, but I'm going to curve the hanging edges using the smooth curve tool in the edit pattern tools. Selecting the corners of that rectangle and making them curved by clicking and dragging in towards the pattern itself. 
Next, sewing it to the umbrella pattern using the free sewing tool because we have the segment points that we will cross over. Sew it to the previously measured line, then make copies of the patterns for all six sections. Like we did before, I recommend you rotate them in the direction that you are working or that the item will sew into the next pattern. I have had you do this so that we don't get confused and we don't have to worry about flipping our sewing directions or our normals later on, and we're working a little bit more effectively. Once they're all in place, go ahead and use the free sewing tool again, making sure to go in the same direction as you start so that you don't cross your lines. Selecting all of those patterns in the 3D window while holding shift and left clicking once. Use the superimpose option with right click. Pull them downward in the 3D window after they are placed. While the tabs are selected, right click them in the 2D window and select inverse selection. Then right click in the 3D window and choose freeze on those larger pattern pieces. Then selecting all of our tabs again, in the property editor, change the particle distance to 30 for your tabs. Simulate these final add-ons into place and then let it settle until the simulation is stable. Now that we're back, mine ended up having a lot more sag in the center and if you don't like it, I can adjust my lines again. Taking a look in the 2D window, it looks like those lines might have lost their elastic value. So I can apply 100 elastic value again if I want to. Make any fixes you deem necessary, and you're pretty much done. You can now save and export this project for render in your preferred 3D package. Check out the other Summer Vibes tutorial videos on how to make more of the assets seen in this render.